Welcome to Binary Jazz. This is a podcast with Binary Gary, who is Gary in the real world. Also with Allison Plus, who is Allison in the real world. Also with Jazz Seat 3 Quince, who is Chris in the real world. Welcome. We all talk like computers here. <laughs> I was really trying to make it through that whole thing without laughing. Uh, <laughs> um, that was an excellent intro. I admire your commitment. <laughs> yeah. It, I, good. Yeah, I, it wasn't really planned. I had it, there was no foresight there. There was just it was just like it was a thing, and I went with it. And I, then uh, I got, and then I got to me, and then I got to my my handle. I'm like, how would a computer say like jazz rap. sequence with a three in it? <laughs> that would be <laughs> jazz at three quins. Um, it did it did sound as though um, when you introduced Allison that you were questioning who is Allison in the real world. Yeah, I I sometimes sometimes those those. Uh, text to speech engines like add weird inflections um yeah, yeah. I, I thought we I live thought... in the city of concord according to a siri yeah. i mean i system. too am questioning who i am in the real world so I, it's just not fair for a computer to do it like yeah <laughs> i've got this i don't need to outsource that to a machine it's yet for grabs. i think it's okay to question that who you are in the real world so the how, phrase that people say where they're like i'm not struggling with anxiety i'm i'm like acing it i'm just like i'm excelling i'm excelling at anxiety. <laughs> uh, fantastic that's so good yeah yeah i'm an expert so uh congratulations gary for uh your uh ground control bot being mentioned on y combinator um, I know it was sort of an afterthought, but it does feel like like this is it. You've made it. You've this is this is your claim to fame. Uh, and it was wow. good that it happened That's after it. you That's fixed that that weird uh, logging bug. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty good thing that I uh, yeah I don't I don't keep a nine point seven gigabyte log file any longer on yeah. a stupid side project. Uh, I you know the longer I write code. The more it's always something silly that breaks. Like, I'm actually thrilled that I was able to log into the server. I've run into times where like the 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 file system is so full that you can't log in. So that was neat that I could log in and delete that file. I could. It was so full that I could not. Um, I couldn't ls directories. So I could change directories, but I couldn't ls directories yeah. because there was not enough memory available to ls apparently. So I'm like, oh God, I need to hurry. Like I'm about to lose the ability to do anything here. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, if it was a video game, you'd be running through a hallway and, and columns would be like crashing down behind you. Have you seen the stupid television show? That's what hacking looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, oh no, now I responded, I forgot another show. It's terrible. It's a, it's a stupid show. It's a reality TV show, mini golf. Um, Rob Riggle is one of the announcers. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can jump in at any point. There's no like there's a reality no TV show point. about mini golf. Yes, I, we, yes we have to Google. It. What's that? Yes, mini golf. Uh, it's it's like people are competing against each other. Uh, holy moly, it's called. Um, <laughs> I highly recommend you watch one episode. You don't need to watch any more because it's pretty much the same jokes for every episode. <laughs> um. It, it, maybe not, but there, there. It's like, yeah, that's it. Watch one episode. I won't judge you if you watch more. But, um, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, there's a hole, uh, called uh, hole number two, where you putt and then uh, pass a bunch of porta potties, and then you have to run after your ball to the rest of the course. Um, but the porta potties randomly open and knock you into the water. Uh, anyway, that's where I was headed. It's the same. It's the same course. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't. That's they a, don't ever change like the course. American Gladiator slash mini golf. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes, it. I said that to Rhonda. I said American Gladiators paved the way for this, thankfully, uh, which meant we also had to go watch an episode. No, I believe we watched two episodes of American Gladiators. <laughs> the nostalgia was hitting hard. Uh, we needed to see some of the other gladiators. They didn't. They weren't all in the first episode we watched. Um, wow. Can can you can you can you imagine like someone like. An alien, an alien arrives on Earth, and they're like, you know, they've sort of like understood like the whole like, okay, well, biological beings need energy, and so you consume food and liquids, right, or solids and liquids generally to create energy, uh, and and you excrete the waste, whatever. Um, you have to recharge, so you sleep at night, blah blah blah. Uh, and then we start talking about entertainment. And you're like, oh, yeah, let me show you American Gladiators, like what context do you, is is already assumed at like the start of that. Like, like, like if you just saw that and you had no other context, the first thing you would think is like, oh my gosh, is this, are these like gladiators? Like, are they mm -hmm. employees of the government? Cause it's American <laughs> gladiators. Yep. Like, is this the way we punish criminals or are, is this the way like you handle election? Well, actually it turns out, yes, it's fuck, fuck. <laughs> That was a roller coaster. Yeah, I feel like I was just taken on an emotional journey. <laughs> this is this is how it rolls these days. Uh, it so somewhere I read online that like walking daily is supposed to help, you know, have a calming effect. A bullshit. Well, a calming effect, unless you're someone who gets very in your own mind. can't seem to get away from it can't even yeah. walk away from it it comes with me because like walking walk is nice morning. but if you're not distracted from your own thoughts then you're in your own thoughts which can oh. be good but mm, sometimes no <laughs> i i have this i have this problem recently where like the podcasts i've been listening to they're not they're, they're engaging but not engaging enough I guess. that's not true switch the it space up. above us well, the space above us when that every other th Thursday means that Friday morning walks are fantastic because that is a show I won't miss. It is a show that I play at normal speed and I await uh, the next sentence constantly. So, you listen to uh, you listen to podcasts uh, at a higher speed generally. I know a lot of people do that. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yep. I listen to. Um, I tried. Um, there was a stuff you should know there was a kickstarter last year that we backed that was for these uh like hard shell paddle boards that fold up and they're called mm -hmm. origami paddlers and it's like whoa that was my microphone uh it's like a you know it does a thing and then it falls down for those of you take... that are getting the audio only version yeah that, that was dumb like i smack my <laughs> microphone and then i do a hand gesture to to describe how the it, it whatever uh anyway no, it's fine <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, where was I going? Oh yeah, they um, they did a town hall um, because they some of their in their initial uh, paddle boards that they've shipped that they've produced and shipped some of the uh, hinges have gotten broken or damaged during shipping, uh, mm -hmm. and it's like a small percentage, but it's a significant percentage uh, and. It's only happening during shipping. It didn't happen during any of the actual product testing or anything. Um, and so they did a, a town hall to sort of talk about that stuff. And that was the first time, because I didn't want to listen. It was 40 minutes. It was like, I didn't want to listen to the whole thing. It was the first time I've ever listened to something intentionally at more than just normal speed. Um, hmm. oh. uh, yeah. I, I, like, I know it's a thing that people do but it's not a thing that I do. And that's, that's including watching 300 episodes of uh, critical <laughs> role, each of them being an yeah. average of like four to four and a half hours. Um, yeah. That was all normal <laughs> speed, normal time. Um, so I watched there's a videos at normal speed. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
literally before this um, started, I was watching um, some serverless Laravel uh, videos and I do those at one and a half. Uh, and every time it starts, like I finish, they're, they're short, they're maybe four or five minutes. And so that finishes and I go to the next video. Well, the next one starts at normal speed and preserve your settings. Um, so when the next one starts, it always sounds like the host is just like very drunk <laughs> because they're previously, their speaking has been so concise, you know, and to the point and quick. And then so the next one they go, hello, welcome. And I'm like, dang, man, are you? And then I put the speed up and it's fine. Uh, Jack is probably not drunk, but it just, it's fine. Um, I, I have a podcast I listen to on Mondays uh, that gives me like a quick summary of what the hell's going on in NASCAR because Tyler is going to want to talk to me about stuff. And I'm like, this is like a way to, to catch up. Uh, but that one has to be at one and a half X. And, and finger over the skip ahead 30 second button when they hit commercials, which works perfectly in high speed mode. Like, way to go, Apple. Way to think that through. <laughs> like, that's nicely done. Uh, stuff you should know I listen to at one and a half X, but only because, uh, you know, like it's, it's good. And sometimes I'm like, I'm into this topic. And sometimes I'm like, I feel like we're filling time here. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't do. I don't do fast speeds. Maybe it's yeah. I don't know. I probably could, but like I, yeah, I don't. What's the rush? I get it. I yeah. get it. I get it. I feel like I need to slow down just generally anyway. <laughs> oh, I. Uh... There's this podcast called Hurry Slowly, and it's all about like being in the moment and. Um, just being more conscious, I would say overall. <laughs> and I was talking to Robin and I was like, does it defeat the purpose if I'm listening to Hurry Slowly at like one and a half, two times the speed? It's fantastic. I also, Probably. all my, my wacky spirituality podcasts, uh, I've actually like unsubscribed from a half dozen philosophy and, and, and quantum physics and spirituality stuff recently. So I've really limited that because Oh, wow. Weird that my mind spirals all over the place when I'm listening to those shows. What a crazy correlation. It's almost like, why can't I sleep when I listen to so much true crime? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's a mystery, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, uh, I, uh, the, obviously, like, I guess it was Monday or Tuesday. I, uh, I stopped listening to the podcast for a bit and talked and before I started talking like I clearly wasn't listening to the whatever podcast was on because oh I think it was a NASCAR one shit um because I wanted to talk about something else anyway um and then today I got to the part of the walk where it's like a half mile through a heavily wooded area uh I, I often like turn it way down during that point and then I today I'm always like why like because I'm not listening anyway at that section of the walk so just I just put my earbuds out for that half mile uh you know, and then put them back in right after the section near the road that's a little less engagement. Do you have a topic? We do. Although, well, it kind of fits. <laughs> it kind of fits. It passed Allison kind of threw me a Hail Mary on a post-it. Um, <laughs> it's... Um, way to go, past Allison. Way to go, past Allison. <laughs> Is this, is, this a pre, is this a pre-move past Allison or a post-move past Allison? Um, pre-move because I found it in a box. Nice. That was that is excellent. Yeah, I was I was really hoping that it was that it was pre-move past Allison and it had just been sitting somewhere for like three months. Not just that, but how many miles has that posted? No, yeah, no, that that is. Today. Yeah. So the topic is. Icky guy. Icky guy? Yeah. I-K-I-G-A-I. Okay. Okay. I went I C K Y. <laughs> I know. It's, it feels very on brand for me. <laughs> Ew. Icky guy. All right. Hold on. Let me. Let me well, in. the first thing we do is. Let's break uh, it down. Yeah. And so this is obviously Japanese, which means we cannot use any prefixes or suffixes <laughs> to figure anything out. So let's fast forward to that section of the uh, analysis. Um, it, 
obviously pronunciation up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me create a new post. And I will get the spelling again. And I will stare at it and pretend that it's going to eliminate anything. I. K I. K I. K I. G A I. G A I. This is a dining term. Ikigai. guy. I mean, sure. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, something that happens or something you do when dining out with friends, but I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> like, a, like a faux pas. It might be. It, no, I was thinking it might be like the way you determine how to split the bill at the end of the night. <laughs> the Japanese would have, a, would have a term for that. Ikigai. Like, <laughs> it's not it. rock paper scissors. <laughs> Isn't it? Because that sounded like perfect. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so awesome if that's actually what it was? And at the end, Allison was like, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> when, uh, when years, wow, I forgot about this. Years ago when I was doing the poker thing, um, went out to the World Series of Poker and uh, uh, we, like as a company, we uh, went out to dinner with a lot of our poker pros. And because they just had no concept of the value of a dollar, like, you know, um, it's Vegas, so fine dining is easy to find, but we would go out and like the way the bill we paid is like someone would be like, all right, and hold out a hat and everyone that ate would throw in a credit card and the waiter would pull the credit card and that's who paid because these people are degenerate gamblers. But um, but I mean, that was like the, what you were opting for when you went out to dinner. Now as a company, we were like, that's great because we were happy to put the whole bill for all the people, but you know, if the odds are, you know, one out of 12 that we're not going to put the bill, even better. Um, I threw in my library card or something. Not a bad idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just a stupid thing that, that we did for many meals. Uh, I'm hazarding a guess that this was mostly men. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is like the white dude's book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's. Uh, um, I, key guy. So okay. Before, like, yeah. I, yeah. I think. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Yeah. No one cares about poker. I think. I certainly didn't then, and I care less now. <laughs> I think Ikigai is uh, a a. I definitely think it's a culinary term. I think you're yeah. onto something there. Uh, I'm going to say that it's some sort of like fish paste. Um. That's like you're leaning too hard into the icky part. I think. No, <laughs> um, I mean no, I mean because they use fish paste in lots of things, yeah. and like you know, Thai food has lots of oyster sauce. Like it's a, it's a thing. Um, I think it's like fish paste that's used in the cooking of something else. I mean, Japan's a, a big island. It's an Wait. island that they use seafood a lot. So I think that it would, it would make sense. Yeah, rewind back to the Thai food with the oyster sauce. Yes. Uh, okay, oyster sauce is obviously not vegan. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I mean, that was, I, I felt like it was a dumb question, but I had to confirm, like, maybe it's not actually oyster sauce, but, or maybe oyster is, I don't know. Um, my second question is, that's used a lot in Thai food, but the Thai menus are often, like, vegan friendly. Do you specifically need to order and say, like, I would like this vegan when you order Thai food, or? Yes. Either, well, either we get the stuff that doesn't have oyster sauce in it. If there's something on the menu that says, and it's made with oyster sauce, then we just avoid those things. Or we specifically say vegan, um, which if they understand what that means, which a lot of places do, um, they will make it just without the oyster sauce. I don't know um, what the oyster sauce adds, because I don't know that how much Thai food I was eating before I was vegan. I don't know that I was eating very much yeah. Thai food before I was vegan. So I don't, I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> um, but I had a, a Penang curry the other day and did tofu. And I, I don't, I'm wondering now, like, is there oyster sauce in it or not? I have no idea. Probably not. Probably not. Curry, but it's usually, you know, it's usually, I usually I see it in black. like stir fried, stir fries and like uh, noodle things mm -hmm. but not all the time yeah all right thank you for that sidebar and sometimes they use like an oyster mushroom sauce that's mm. that's 
vegan. Yeah, I do think that there's like a, a vegan a vegan oyster sauce that is. Um, Got it. But again, I don't know what I'm missing. It basically just adds like a saltiness. I don't think it's like. Yeah. An earthy, well, I guess it would be earthy since it's in the ocean, but an earthy salt. It'd probably be unami. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love that at Trader Joe's, you can just get like, in the spice section, you can just get like a container of that. It's like mushroom powder or something. I don't know. Yeah, I bought some to try it out last time I was there because I was like, well, I'm here. I can only... Yeah. smuggle so much everything spice back with me hmm. um and it's interesting but i don't really use it that often like i don't know what to use it on like kind of sprinkle it on vegetables or like sauces but like Gen yeah i was gonna say in sauces but generally early on is where i think i have had the most success with it yeah but that's a really relative term in my case success yeah <laughs> Yeah, when the window only opens this much. Like, um, I did make tomato sauce last week though, and it's fine. And it's fine. <laughs> it's not, it, it's, I mean, it's better than what you would get out of a jar, but it's, you're not like, oh, this is amazing. You're like, eh. So fine. no one is like, oh, it's just like my Nona used to make or like. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. All right, so Gary, what you do uh, is you get two cans of red tomatoes or, you know, just a bunch of actual tomatoes. Uh, you, you put some oil and garlic in uh, a pot and you, you, uh, you heat the garlic up until it's a little bit uh, roasted. And then you put the, the tomatoes in and then you put an amount of basil and oregano, just like sprinkle some of that stuff on mm -hmm. as much as you want. And oh, no, with with the oil and garlic, you put in chili peppers um, to taste however spicy you want this this stuff. Put the chili peppers in with the garlic, then you put the tomatoes in and, and then the stuff. And then what we do, and that makes it really good, just sort of a spicy sauce. Yeah. Um, then what we do is um, we make it a rosa sauce. So we do like a cream sauce. Uh, like uh, So we soak cashews and we blend them up with, um, I put in like nutritional yeast, a little bit more basil and oregano. Um, and just blend it up and then pour it in. And so now you've got sort of a, a pinkish, like a rosa mm -hmm. sauce. Uh, and then you just dump a whole bunch of like uh, veggies in there. Like I usually, I usually cook the, I usually fry the veggies up and then just whatever, whatever we have in the kitchen this week, throw it in there and then put it on a pasta. I, uh, Some tofu. I had two big tomatoes, not that big, but big tomatoes from my neighbor's garden and probably like three pounds of cherry tomatoes that I put in. And I did uh, oil and garlic. Um, I did. Oh, I guess in that same vein, like I put like just a little bit of pesto in to treat it as like a seasoning, right? Um, when it got like really hot, it was a bit on the acidic side. So I was like, I need to throw some sweetness in. So mm. I used- Oh yeah, we uh, put in, I mean, we put in brown sugar. Well, we don't use brown uh, sugar. We actually, we put, we use coconut sugar for the same thing. So I put in coconut sugar, like a tablespoon of that. Yeah, I put in just like a squirt of honey and mixed it in and tasted it and until it tasted right. Uh, Trying to remember what else I put in there. Oh, carrots. I put like just a little bit of carrot in because that's also on the sweeter side to help help break some of that acidity. Um, missing something. Oh, when I had the garlic in there, I of course had some onions as well. Not much. Mm. Uh, and then I used the um, immersion blender because um, the tomatoes, I the see. cherry tomatoes, like I wasn't taking the skin off like a thousand cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't either. I would just, I would just let them yeah. cook. Yeah. The, yeah. It was just a lot of ratio of skin to. We make a, so we make a sort first, of, but... we make a sort of like, well, we call it pesto, but it's like with tomatoes, like it's a, it's really just sort of a, a hearty thick tomato sauce. It's separate from this that we like, whenever we have a huge harvest of tomatoes, we just dump them all in a pot and boil it way, 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 way down. Um, it's crazy how much that reduced. I mean, yeah. I'm like, oh, this might, I might have a problem here, like right at the top of the pot. And by the time it was done, it was, you know, yeah. perfectly full. So yeah. lesson learned. I will, uh, I will like go with way more tomatoes next time, uh, but only if I'm not going to buy tomatoes for that. 
<laughs> Once I can get it for like super cheap. We picked up a, our CSA box yesterday and there's a cucumber that's the size of a small boa constrictor. <laughs> And I don't know what I'm going to do with it because I'm like, I like cucumber, but like, I'm just like, this is a lot. It, it's gigantic. I'll take a picture with like something for scope for size. Yeah. It's like carrying Definitely. a small child. You're yeah. We, uh, we came back, we came back from our, our trip and we were looking in the garden and we had a couple of very large uh, um, cucumbers, Armenian cucumbers. Yeah. Armenian cucumbers. Um, and yeah, so one of them is like that big and one of them is like a little bit smaller. And, um, and then we usually do like lemon cucumbers, which are, you know, just small, small round. Uh, mm -hmm. and we had a couple of those, but the Armenian cucumbers were doing really well while we were gone. Um, so we had several very large, uh, cucumbers and, and they get curvy. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's like sitting on the counter and every time I round the corner into the kitchen, I go, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Snake. <laughs> uh, and right, that so is icky guy. When you yeah. round the corner and you see a cucumber sitting on the counter, and you're, and you're like, "Oh, that's icky you're guy." Startled by produce. Startled by produce. Did I tell you about when I took Charlotte to the grocery store with me recently, and they had like the water turned on? And I'm like, "Oh, the vegetables are taking a shower," and she was just so fascinated by it. <laughs> it was great. There was it happened to be someone like working there who was just cracking up. <laughs> like, were they dirty? <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned off and she's like she said something about it not being long enough to get clean I, don't remember why, but it's, uh, I mean astute yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's accurate yeah <laughs> so uh i ha i can tick off alaska on my uh states visited uh yeah yeah that was fun uh, the hardest ones to reach. What was that? Yeah. One of the most difficult ones to reach. Yeah. And we were out pretty remote. And a lot of the places that we actually stopped, stopped were these like islands that like, you know, in this town, like the road extends like, you know, 16 miles in this direction and 12 miles in this direction. And that's it. And that's the extent. Like the only way you can get to this, this place is by airplane or boat. And like, there is several of those. I mean, Juno, where we landed is one of those. And I think Sitka, where we left from, is also on an island. So, um, yeah. Can you imagine, like, being in one of those cities, like, you know, fairly inland in Alaska, and, like, oh, whatever appliance breaks, you know? And I can't Well, they, they talked about that. Some of the... So then we got to fly something in, and it's, like, yeah. a big deal when that plane lands. I'm sure everybody in the city knows, like, oh. So both, both the day that we... microwaves here today. Both the day that we landed and the day that we left, um, we had sort of a local tour guide uh, take us someplace or take us around town. And there's also somebody who is from Alaska that was on the boat. She was a, um, a marine biologist that sort of specialized in salmon um, from Anchorage or not Anchorage specifically, but around there. Uh, anyway, they talked about how because there are a lot of, especially in Southeast Alaska, um, where you're on this island, an island that doesn't have a lot of contact with the mainland, um, that there's sort of a culture of just fixing shit, like taking and, and, and scavenging and like taking, like, you know, you put out your trash and somebody goes through your trash and like, oh, I could use this thing. And then they use that thing to, to fix their other thing. And so like, um, Jeez, there is rude to like put larger items in the trash can you would like yeah to there there's like this example of like you know this boat that got you know beached or crashed or whatever and then like people coming through and like oh i could use a you know radiator and like you know just picking it apart because it's it's dead now and but we can use all these different pieces yeah. for different things yeah hmm. Hmm. so yeah i think yeah. i think that's very much a a thing um because they they don't have access to things and, and you know, I, was, I was thinking about like um like buying like buying a car mm. <laughs> like how does that work when you live on an island like like do car lots exist in these cities i'm guessing they don't do you when you buy a car do you go to like the mainland and then have it have it cargo shipped to your island and like how much why would, would you need to go cost? to the car that's a fair point too. 
Why, why would I, you need the, it? The last, the last three cars I bought, like I didn't test drive. I just had them shipped to me. It's a car. Like what's, it's fine. Whatever. No, yeah. I know. But yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but like, it would have to come from, like when I didn't from some place that, that it was just, it like would have to come from like some place that that's yeah, probably fine. <laughs> it would have to come from some place that had access to like, you know, shipments of, of vehicles, which, you know, wouldn't necessarily come on these, on these cargo ships. I don't know. I, the when two of the cars that I bought, like the shipping was kind of like um, bought the car and then I'm like, well, now I got to get it to me. Right. And the, the, the dealer I worked with is a friend of mine. Uh, he's like, yeah, let me let me like just there's like a bulletin board somewhere, virtual bulletin board that you can post like, hey, I need to move this car from this co- zip code to this zip code. Um, and I literally uh, found that know, that bulletin board that you're talking about, probably when my car was broken down in Winnemucca and we had come back home. Um, and yeah, I had to get my car from Winnemucca, Nevada to, to Salt Lake City. And like, uh, you know, in this case, like I went to the lowest bidder because who the heck knows like what you're, you know, uh, yeah. and, and then I get, when they delivered the car, they delivered to the wrong place. And I had to catch an Uber <laughs> That's out That's what there, happens when you find the lowest line. bidder. <laughs> oh yeah. It was a thing. Um, and, uh, uh, and it was like completely out of gas uh, but they're supposed to deliver it to you running. So they had to go buy a gallon of gas to put in it, to start it up. To sh- I, it, it was, I thought I was going to be um, uh, robbed and left on the side of the road at one point. It was, it was fun. I survived. It's great. Thanks for a good story. Yeah. And now we get to find uh, out what Icky guy is. Yes. Okay. So yeah, there's no translation, no direct English translation, but it basically embodies the idea of happiness and living. So it's kind of the reason you get up in the morning. Um, oh, and, I love that. <laughs> um, it often is associated with this Venn diagram that has four overlapping circles. So what you love, oh, what you're yeah. good at, what the world needs and what you can be paid for. Um, mm. I, I have seen that and I didn't know it was Icky Guy. I love this. Yeah. Anyway, um, so um, that's that's kind of the like the Western idea of it, and it it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with income or have to do, um, but it's basically just like your value in life can be work, but it's not necessarily limited to that. Um, it really just obviously is such an individual thing. Um, and, and, but we got the Japanese part right. You did, and actually, it's composed of two words. So "iki" means life, and "guy" describes value or worth. So, but how would you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. No, but now every time I hear the word icky, I will think life. <laughs> At least that... for the next 72 hours and then it will be replaced. If someone goes, word. that's icky. You can be like, that's life. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat coincidentally. And I will laugh at the joke and they will not get it. And Yeah. Uh, we started watching because it's on Netflix now and uh, a show called Cat People. Um, and uh partially i was inspired to to start the series with with the kids because they're one of the episodes is about the acro cats which we uh went to see live uh before the pandemic uh which is really cool and it's like a bunch of cats that do tricks um and it's awesome uh and so we wanted and so we wanted to see that their episode and then we watched the other ones and so the one that we watched earlier this week um and my daughter loves it because you know cats uh the one that we saw this week was a Japanese woman who makes cat portraits that are three-dimensional out of like felt. She felt these mm. insanely realistic uh, cat portraits. Um, and it, and she, she was an artist, like, you know, went to art school and whatever, and, you know, wanted to be a painter and then wanted to be a photographer and like never really found her place. And like, then like this becomes her place. Um, and it was really sort of interesting. So it's like interesting that like we have this, this like Japanese con- concept of, of uh, I don't know, a well uh, a fulfilled life. And, and that's sort of like that, that story was kind of about her finding, finding her place and finding the thing that, that gave her um, a sense of, of worth and, and value. 1.2 miles that way is a cat cafe. It's a cat what? Cafe. Cat cafe. Cat, yeah. You can go in, you pay and hang out with cats, which yep. like I know of in, Japan, obviously, but for it to be in the city of Concord, like it's 
Okay. We have a cat. We have a cat cafe. Right. Um, it's called um, Tinker Cats. Tinkers. I mean, all Tinkers. Really need is one Tinkers cat cafe. A lot of cats and a coffee yeah. machine. Right. Cat yeah. <laughs> this place <laughs> also has down beer. The, like, the bar. Does, so, um, like, you can go get a beer and pet cats and yeah. And the honestly, cat- like I'm like, oh, who would do that? But actually, now that we don't have any animals in our lives, I'm like, mm-hmm. we might. I might need to make that like a place I work from for an hour or one day. A lot of times you can you can adopt the cats that they have in there too, and that's a lot of a lot of times it's it's like um, I'm ready for that. A lot of times it's older cats that would n- not necessarily thrive in a, a shelter or, or a rescue or something because mm-hmm. because people tend to want kittens. Um, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a thing. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of a lot of I think that's that's part of the reason why a lot of those places exist that's definitely at the the one that we have is all of those cats are up for adoption and they get cats in from places the the i don't know what it is there like there's part of me that is just absolutely fascinated by the economics of like small towns um eh. so like it the the spot like i don't know like i obviously like i think i think more and more i feel um, an imperative to support, to support like, you know, uh, small business, but specifically like underrepresented small business, right? So the, there's a place downtown called Bottle and Can that sells beer uh, cans. And so like pretty much any time I'm like doing like a small gift for someone, I'm like, I'm going to go there and get them a six pack and the beer's overpriced and whatever. Uh, but it also has like a lot of my clients beer. So it's cool. Like I can get like a really wacky beer and like unique, uh, but um but next to it is the Thai restaurant, which uh, is wonderful. Uh, I should mention uh, Bottle and Can is a woman owned uh, company. Across the street is the game store. So, like on a Friday, like I might head downtown and take a kid with me, and we'll go like uh, Thai restaurant, place some order, hit the game store, walk across the street, get some beer, pick up Thai food, head home. And it's like, trifecta. <laughs> it's a pretty big day when we do that, honestly. Like, I'm pretty excited and exhausted because that's at least three people I had to talk to, <laughs> like the real world. Uh, so it's, uh, but it's also like, I, like you can parallel park right on the street in one in front of one of these places, and it's like, you know, there's the stupid old Coca-Cola advertisement painted on the wall, like on the side of this brick building, and you know everything down there is, you know, 75 years old, and you know it's 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 weird. It's weird. Oh, the bookstore. I yeah there's yeah. there's Dang. we have a couple game stores and how I, do they survive that's where i was going how do they survive uh, how do they yeah. do it there's never anybody in there like what <laughs> is the rent free i don't i don't know that's it um we have a couple game stores in salt lake city and obviously salt lake, salt lake city is not a small city um but i very very rarely visit them because i do we do most of our shopping online um, so last year when uh, Wizards of the Coast released a new book that I wanted, I pre-ordered it from um, a friendly local game store and actually physically walked into an actual building and had them hand an actual book to me uh, and engaged with real people in the real world. And it was actually kind of cool. Um, so uh, this I fall with the, with the books that they're releasing this fall, I, I, might, I might do the same thing again. Have a loyalty account. I mean, once per season isn't gonna isn't gonna hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tough. Be it, you know, there's there's like you know they're releasing three books like October, November, and uh, September. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.